Hey, what's up everyone? This is Frederik Steinmetz and this is the second cycles tutorial. I'm going to, uh, in this part, I'm going to go over the scene, including the modeling and the rigging of my object. And when I say my object, I mean this lovely little orchid mantis that I made in Blender. And um, just uh, a couple of words about the workflow. If you want to model as something as complex as this, you need reference pictures. Lots and lots of reference pictures. So I went online and um, this is the model that actually is closest to the coloring of this little guy. And um, there's some other uh, stuff. For example, this one I had purely for anatomy purposes. And this one is really nice and bright yellow, uh, bright white, but I wanted more, more colors in there. So, well, you get the picture. Get as many reference pictures as you can get before you start modeling. And uh, since I study biology, I think I don't need to uh, study up on insect anatomy anymore. But uh, if you didn't, if you don't have um, a detailed knowledge of the anatomy of the object you're creating, then you should probably want to go and have a look into that. So, this being said, I first uh, wanted to approach this uh, mantis as a low poly model, but that didn't work out at all. I just could not get the the level of detail that I wanted. So. Um, let me just uh, check where I am. There it is. This is the low poly version I started off with. And um, you can see that this was really, really low poly. And I did not uh, manage to get this groove here. This was the first starting point, and then also. Uh, quads for the legs just were not enough and I thought well if you take a cube and you put a level 2 subsurf modifier on it then you basically get some somewhat of a sphere so I thought maybe uh, four vertices for the circumference of the leg are enough basically so the legs would be extruded cubes but that did not work at all it's uh, it might work for for low poly models that uh, aim for computer games or that just don't aim at such a high um, resolution level but for what I wanted to do I in the end went back to my uh, usual high poly modeling style or uh, maybe I should say mid poly because it's I guess you can put even more detail into the little guy than I did so let's call it advanced intermediate poly count okay um, so after I gave up this, um, I had still had to find a way to um, make a um, high poly leg because the the leg that I modeled for the mantis, this one is very high poly. I wanted all those different spikes to be uh, different objects, separate, uh, not separate objects, but they are actually modeled. They're not particles or they're not floating around, they are attached to the model, which made the forearms quite high poly. So let me show you a trick that you can do if you want to have um, let's take let's take eight. That's a little more high poly. Okay. So I'll add a cylinder and I'll change this to eight and you can see that I press F six down there to get this menu. There you can see I press F six, okay and um, this is my 8 vertex high poly leg 8 vertex meaning um, these, those are 8 and now I want to attach this to a low poly body so I'm going to add control R, add a loop cut, another one then I'll just uh, select these three faces and extrude them so uh, instead of the 8 um, vertices that I have over here that I would have to free on my body or to create a hole with eight uh, vertices. I now only have six of them. Um, actually, if you do it like this, you don't save yourself any vertices. So, uh, let me just go to normal. 
Uh, let's just to be cheap and delete the faces and this. No, let's be. Let's just start over. Control R and then delete everything and uh, make this new. As I said, um, if you want a really low poly connection from your leg to your body, then you just uh, take one of these and uh, you can see that now you have sort of a joint from the original leg to the body and even though the original leg is high poly the joint to the body is not only disadvantage it destroys your edge loop but that is a very small price to pay if in return you can if in return you can um, make a high poly leg and attach it to a low poly body okay this was just uh, intermission let's have a look at the rest of the body um, okay here is one of those catching legs in an early stage you can see there are no spikes yet except for up here what I did up here was use an array modifier I just modeled uh, to two spikes actually only modeled one spike with the circle around it and then used a mirror modifier and on top of the mirror modifier I used an array in order to get these um, that are fairly um, regular the spikes on the, st on the tibia and um, if I apply the array modifier you can see that I can now edit this and um, if I go in here and press O so I get the connect modus mode then you can see I can make this wider by pulling it I can for example um, select with C I can select all those tips and uh, now I can press S or maybe Alt S yeah I can make the the spikes wider if I select all the tips and then press Alt S or I can of course um, throw um, tour or uh, move them down so they become longer so after I applied the array there's actually a lot of stuff that I can still do with this and uh, so this is sort of a mid state of this arm let's go and have a look at um, this one, this is more advanced. I mean, sculpt mode here, apparently. Okay. Um, in this one, I have already added all those loop cuts in order to get all these spikes going. And if you do that, you run into a problem. And uh, I think, yeah, there you can see it. Even though this is shaded smooth, since there are a lot of um, Let's isolate this since there are a lot of um, of edges here and the the polys are not very square they are stretched this is why I get these um, grooves or however you want to call them seams and um, one solution would be to add new loop cuts but I actually uh, thought of this technique where you can attach a low poly arm or high poly arm to a low poly body I thought of this uh, actually after I was done modeling and I have to say I'm a bit skeptical about using it so I did that's not what I did I could add these loop cuts here and of course I should then separate this and this from uh, this high poly middle part of the arm but what I did was in the end when I realized I had these uh, seams I went into sculpt mode and you'll have to check sometimes the smooth tool work better if I go over this with a smooth tool you can see that the changes are fairly drastic but there's also a polish tool not that one that one and that worked even better so of course right now that was really extreme what I did there um, this I guess does the opposite so in the end, after I was done with all the modeling and edit mode, or modeling and edit mode, that's what I usually do. 
I went ahead in sculpt mode and just polished a few of the edges without using a um, multi-res modifier because the multi-res modifier can only be on top of all the others or um, before all the other modifiers. You can't have a mirror modifier on top of a multi-res and um, if you're using if you're um, animating an object and using your armature and a subsurf modifier you might want to uh, put the subsurf modifier after the armature because then uh, all jagged edges that will be accidentally created by your armature will be smoothed out by the subsurf modifier and of course that does not work if you have a multi res modifier instead of a subsurf okay a lot of theory let's have an actual example so uh, I'm going back to object mode and I'm also going to um, this frame. Yeah. You can see that I modeled all the individual objects like the head and the arms and so and such I modeled them separately because then you can uh, your geometry is not in the way the part that you're working on right now is not in the way and if you once you are happy with your object and let's say this is attached to the object's body body you can select these two edge loops by alt middle clicking W loop tools bridge so this is a very easy way to connect legs and heads to bodies and if you don't find these loop tools here you have to enable them in the add-ons so um, over here if you type in loop activate the mesh loop tools Okay, they are very handy if you try to model more complex stuff Okay, so here is one of the legs let's isolate that and let's just rig it really quickly. I'm going to um, put the cursor on top of the leg and press Shift A and add an armature, single bone. And uh, you might want to rotate those in op in edit mode because otherwise your your armature will have an initial rotation, which you don't want to. So what I'm doing now is I'm pressing E and then placing these balls that are created exactly where the joint is supposed to bend the leg so this is right after the spike here and um, let's just do this one and one more okay now I don't know what happened here X that is weird. Probably press Shift D or something accidentally. Okay, those are all the bones we need. And if we have a look now in edit mode, you can see that this bone is named bone. I'll name this femur dot R. And the dot R indicates that this is the femur of the right leg. And I'll call this trochanter, however you pronounce that in English, dot R. And uh, then I'll call this tibia dot r and this is part of the tarsus so I'll just call this tarsus one dot r and tarsus two dot r okay that should do if I now select this leg and then shift select the armature press control p I want to choose with empty groups and what blender then does is uh, he will create vertex groups for you and those vertex groups can be found over here you can see this is the bone if you go press control tap and get into post mode you can see which bone you have selected over here femur.r and if I then sh um, click on this one I and press control tap in a mesh then I get to weight paint mode and you can see if I select a bone the um, according vertex group gets selected with it so that is a really handy feature so even though I'm not doing any weight painting I'm still in weight paint mode because then I have to I can automatically have blender select my um, my groups for me now if I alt click alt right click on this loop and alt right click on um, let's take this one that's easiest I can hide the two actually let's 
take this one and not this one. Okay. If I hide these two by pressing H and then press L while my mouse is over one of these vertices, you can see that I now have everything selected that belongs to the trochanter. And if I select the trochanter bone and then press uh, set uh, turn this up to 1 and press assign, you can see that it now turned red. And that means if I rotate the trochanter bone, all these vertices will stay relative to the bone. So weight 1 means no other movement whatsoever. I can do the same thing with this. Uh, make sure you have this one selected, then L over these and click assign. Now, if I um, press Alt H to unhide these, you can see that the two connecting vertex rings are now selected. If I select this bone and then go to point 0.5, select assign, you can see that there now is a transition between the two bones. Now this is where the leg will bend and the rest of this will stay stiff. If I now deselect those, select the femur bone, press assign again, then you can see we have this joint working nicely. Now, um, I'll take this edge loop again. That works actually pretty well. And then shift select, uh, that was the wrong one. Yeah, that one. And now since my weight paint is already at 0.5, I'm going to press assign and then hide them. And uh, that was not the perfect loop to hide. This one as well. And uh, I'm doing this because now I can set up the weight, assign, and then unhide them, hide those, press L, and uh, now I forgot to select the tibia bone, but uh, the reason I'm doing this alternating is because I don't like moving the slider over here. So uh, that's just a little tip to save you some work. I should probably fix this before I continue H and um, okay hide those two that was extrude I guess and okay first of all remove them from this one and then add them to this one. Okay. This works. This sort of works. And I'll just weight paint these manually. Uh, okay, I'm not sure what's why this is keeping, but um, we'll... Ah, oh, this is probably because it's, yeah, it's affected by... Oops, that should have been subtract. Okay. And this bone add yeah that should do good okay um, the reason why I did this for the leg separately is so I can um, create the entire leg rig for the spider for example I could create eight rigs this way and then just join the object and also join the armatures in the end so that saves a lot of work and um, Let's just make this thing IK. First of all, rotate, um, press Alt G with all the bones selected to get them back into the original position. So when I press Tab and get into edit mode, nothing changes. So that's a bit annoying. And I'll take this ball over here and press E to extrude it out. And then I press Control P, uh, Alt P, I mean, and clear the parent. Because the IK will not work well if the if this bone is parented to that bone and in return this bone is constrained to that bone that will produce very very weird results and when your leg is spinning around like a propeller then you probably have parenting issues um, yeah in blender not with your kids okay shift I um, first select this one then select this one so this is the opposite of parenting where the opposite order of parenting and, and press shift I and select IK to selected bone. And if I now move this one around, you can see the entire leg following. 
Now this might be too much and if you have a rest of the body attached this will be too much for sure. So you can limit how many bones after this one are affected by the IK constraint. So I'll just by default it's zero that means every bone in this direction is getting affected. So I'll change this to three and now you can see that it's only affecting the from the tibia down or the trochanter downwards which is what we want. Then I'll go into edit mode again and press shift A. It will automatically insert a new bone and I will put this exactly in front of the knee and uh, call this bone pole. Okay, now if I select the IK constraint and select pole target, first I have to select armature which indicates that you can also use empties or cubes or whatever but I'm going to use the armature so if I'm in pose mode I don't have to worry about where my object my pole object is and I'll just select pole and this immediately um, did something weird um, the reason is actually let me just show you why I even selected the pole if I move this around you can see well, okay um, apparently the constraint is now disabled yeah I guess yeah there we go okay if I move this around you can see that the leg um, that the leg moves but I don't have any control over in which direction the knee bends this is working actually quite nicely but I want more control so I'll reset the location and as a pole target in this one I choose the armature again and then the pole bone and if I now move the pole bone you can see that the knee is doing something weird and to be honest with you I don't know how to uh, set this originally because this bone is in its rest position but you can just select this one and change the pole angle manually until it's aligned again Ah, oh, this was exactly 90 degrees off, so okay, that's easy to remember. And now if I select the pole bone, you can see the knee bends with it, which is exactly what I wanted. Okay, now this is very simply the rig of a insect leg. Very, very crudely, and you can rotate the tip with this bone, but my weight painting is not suited for that. So that's how I rig an insect leg and now I uh, can take the entire leg including the armature that's very important don't duplicate them individually and duplicate the entire thing okay now uh, in this you can see that the armature of course has a different name armature.001 but the vertex groups have the same name there actually were some vertex groups apparently uh, there were some vertex groups left already so just ignore those um, but you can see that the vertex groups are the same tibia, trochanter, femur and so on so um, if I select all the bones press W and say flip names then Blender will change every dot R to dot L which is awesome because now we can combine the two armatures to have one single uh, to have one single armature and the two bones don't uh, and they don't have any conflict with each other because they are named dot r and they are named dot l which is exactly what we want so if you join these two armatures you will see that something weird happens and that is this leg jumps over there reason is this leg was parented to this armature and its original location was still at the center. So um, when you unparent it by giving it a new parent, because if you join those, only the parents of the active objects are now active, if that makes any sense, um, it will jump away from its original location. For example, if I press Alt P and clear parent, then it will jump back to this original location. So it's a good idea to clear parent and keep transformation before you join any of the armatures. Because if I join them now, you can see they're staying in place. And if I go into pose mode, 
Um, I can select this one and rotate it around, and for some reason... Yeah, okay. Um, now the armatures are joined, and that is that means they are now both named armature. But this object is looking for armature.001, which doesn't exist, so the armature modifier is actually empty. So if I select this one, shift select, just the leg, shift select this leg, press control J, now they're one object, sharing of course all their original modifiers. Then I can select this one and this leg works and this leg works as well. And if you have four legs that are re really similar, like my spiders, they only differ in size, and the f that's eight. That's eight, by the way. Here we have four legs that are the same. Then this can save you a lot of work by doing it this way. And you can have as many armatures as you want, and then connect them in the end. And in the second part, we're going to talk about how to texture the little guy.